Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, here's a playlist of our entire second season of LFF. If you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna chat about something new in the world of large format photography. Today, you guessed it, we're talking about ground glass. So let's get our loops, let's get our dark cloths, and let's get under there and take a look. A critical part of many large format cameras is the ground glass. This is where the magic happens. This is the original live view. This is where we, the large format photographers, can compose our pictures. The way we do this is by letting our lens project its image circle, that circle of light that's coming out of the lens. It projects uninterrupted onto a translucent surface. The reason we use a piece of glass is once we grind that glass, to a fine, enough, uh, a fine enough granularity, we can let some light through, but also enough that it creates an almost opaque surface. So the image can form on this gritty matte finished surface and we can check critical focus. We can see if something's sharp and see if we need to apply movements to our picture. If this glass becomes more transparent, the light will go all the way through and we'll have a hard time seeing it. So the finer the grind on our ground glass, the easier we'll be able to see the picture on there. And there's different types of ground glass. There's just the regular glass, there's high intensity ones, there's ones that use magnifying screens. There's a lot of different options, but let's start with the basics. You've got your ground glass. You've got your lens open, you have the aperture wide open, so to the lowest F number, and you have light hitting the ground glass. The next step we need to do is we need to make sure that there's no extra stray light hitting the shiny side of our ground glass so we can compose our picture. One of the easiest ways to do this is to darken the outside around of it. One way to darken around this ground glass is by using like an old t-shirt or a hoodie. That'll work great. If you like, you can go with something a little bit fancier like a dark cloth. Over the years, I've really, really liked my black jacket focusing cloth. This one has like sleeves on it, but most importantly, it has a zipper and a drawstring at the top. And that allows me to kind of cinch it around the camera. So when I have a bigger camera, like my Cinar, I kind of zip it up right to the post here and it keeps it tight and that stray light won't get in. That's how I film these ground glass shots that you're seeing right now. And when it's cold outside, I can kind of get underneath there and it's, uh, it's not as chilly too. So there's some benefits there. That's one way to darken the area around it. Some cameras like 4x5 press cameras, Graflex and, and the like, will have little flip up hoods available. These are either little metal bladed or plastic bladed hoods that when you press a little switch, the little leaves pop up and get in the way of extra stray light coming in. This is an easy way and really convenient way to darken the area around the ground glass. One downside of using those little flip up hoods is sometimes those hoods can be really long and a standard or shorter loop with a lower magnification might not get in there as easy. So if you're trying to check critical focus there, you may have to get a longer loop or some sort of attachment for your magnifier to check that focus. So just watch out for that if you're using uh, the magnifying hood. Now, some cameras get even crazier by offering things like reflex viewers or binocular hoods on there. One such system is this crazy guy right here. The Cinar system uh, made both. Some of them will have a clip-on set of binoculars, so two little optics so I can change my, uh, change my depth in there and kind of see into my corners. And they also had a reflex viewer. So there was actually a mirror that would attach and flip the image right side up. Opinion time, but I really don't like that. I actually really like having the picture upside down and backwards. It abstracts the world in front of you just enough to start to notice the little things. For me, large format's all about finding those little things. Ooh, what if I place this over here? Or, oh, I never thought of that. That becomes this weird shape. It kind of, when you just flip the world 180 degrees, it kind of starts to break things down into those elements of art, your line, your shape, your form. I start to notice little accents of color more than I otherwise would. Maybe it's just the act of slowing down because the picture's not the way I'm used to seeing it, but I really like when that happens. So those reflex viewers make it convenient. So if you're in the studio and you're maybe doing a lot of portraits for a special event, this could really help making it look right side up. So what you're seeing is truly what you're getting. With a ground glass, where that grind is positioned is very important. In a ground glass frame, 
there's always a little bit of spacing that occurs and it's very important what side you have your glass on. The foggy side or the ground side of the glass is always going to be facing towards the lens because when I displace the ground glass in the frame, this is meant to show me where my film plane is. So when I displace that with a holder, that holder is going to go in and when I reveal the dark slide in the film, the film and the glass should be in the same position. If I reverse the glass or if I put extra things in there to change that spacing, what I'm checking focus on and what I'm shooting will actually not agree. And that can be really painful for focus. Another tool that's available to aid our process of focusing on the ground glass is what's called a Fresnel. It's spelled like it should be called Fresnel, but it's French, go figure. So the S is kind of silent there. So a Fresnel is really just like a magnifying lens. It can be placed on either side of the ground glass. The aftermarket ones will usually attach to the shiny side of the ground glass or closest to where the photographer is. And some of the professionally or pre-installed Fresnels will actually go between the matte finish or the, the, grind, the ground side of the glass and the lens. The advantage to that is it's brighter when it's installed like this, but it's removable when it's installed like that. I actually have a Fresnel attachment here. This is one that just clips onto my Cinar. And when I hold it away from my face, you can see, oh, everything gets bigger and goofier because that's what this is. It's kind of like a, like a page magnifier. If you've ever seen those magnifiers for magazines and books, like, oh, what's the date? Uh, I can magnify what's in front of me. When I put it on the ground glass, what it effectively does is it concentrates the light that's coming in closer to the center. If we look up really close on the Fresnel, there's all these little concentric circles and those circles are bringing the light closer to the middle. So when I have a Fresnel on the back of my focusing screen, what will happen is my center is gonna get very bright, but if I start moving from that center of light, light will drop off very quickly. So it'll be very hard to check my corners for critical focus and sharpness and it might actually get a little bit darker. So what I love about this one is, well, it protects the ground glass one. And then when I need to check my corners, I pull off the glass, I get my loop, do my check, great. And then I pop it back on and it also serves as a little protector. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you're thinking about getting a Fresnel or a camera that has a Fresnel, if you need to buy one because it didn't come with your camera, they can be pretty expensive. We're talking anywhere from 200 bucks for a four x five one all the way up for 500 plus dollars for one for an eight by 10 or maybe ultra large format. That's a lot of money to throw at a specialty tool. And I will kind of leave this up to you, the photographer to choose. I myself, I've gone through enough ground glass that there's no way I'm gonna drop that kind of money for a Fresnel. Usually the question I'll pose to someone whenever they're thinking about getting an accessory like a Fresnel that costs a lot of money, I always pose the question, would you rather have this specialty tool or that much money in film? And I don't know about you, but I almost always want to have that extra film. 500 bucks goes a long way. And if I'm already mentally starting to spend that money on this accessory I'm not sure I need, I'll just buy the film. That's why I now have a freezer of film. But I also just kind of know that I would eventually break that glass. Uh, in fact, that brings us to our next part of the ground glass discussion. What happens if your ground glass breaks? It's, I think it's inevitable. I know some folks that have never done it and good on you for never breaking a ground glass. I do not have that kind of luck. I travel with my large format camera. I beat it up, it's a tool. And as such, I've broken a good number of ground glass. I broke so many that I had to watch uh, Tony Santo's tutorial on how to make your own ground glass. It's pretty cool. I watched that, that was years ago, but I'll link to that in the description below. It's a really great tutorial. But anyway, if your ground glass breaks, step one, don't panic. It happens. There are some makeshift options, but you can use some pretty easy tools to create a ground glass in a pinch. In my large format travel case, so if I'm going a long distance away from home, I'll carry a few different things to make a ground glass out of. One, just a roll of standard gift wrapping tape. So not the super clear, clean stuff. Get the really cheap stuff that has a foggy appearance. Anything that creates a translucent surface, I can strip that across my now empty frame 
one piece of tape this way, one piece of tape this way, and that will actually give me a foggy enough surface to check my critical focus. Okay, it won't be critical, it'll be pretty coarse focus, but that'll still help me see an image. So that can be one way to do it. Or you can just panic and also do scale focusing, bring a ruler and just go down to like hyperfocal, right? So that f-stop where everything's gonna be in sharp focus. But you probably don't want all your pictures at f-11, so you can use the scotch tape method. A few years back, I went to this awesome workshop down in Santa Fe with Mr. Alan Ross, who was one of Ansel Adams' assistants, uh, to do some shooting in black and white printing. And wouldn't you know it, I broke my glass just before uh, the first day of shooting with Alan. And he wouldn't take that for an answer. As soon as he heard my ground glass was broken, he went into his shop, he took out a piece of acrylic, and he actually handmade uh, this ground glass for me. It's acrylic, it's a slight bit thicker than most ground glass, but anytime I'm traveling, I pop this bad boy right onto my Takahara. It's pretty much indestructible. Many more things would break on the camera before this thing does. And, and you can tell, it's definitely not as clean as a standard ground glass, but you know what? It works great. I took this on my Takahara to Africa and it was awesome for getting that critical focus. It's, it's just enough to do it. So that's, uh, that's another thing that you can have in your back pocket or your, like your travel version of the ground glass. So I've already had my hands all over my ground glass stuff and there's probably some folks freaking out because I'm, oh, you're getting fingerprints all over it. What happens if your ground glass gets dirty or scummy, you need to clean it? One thing you don't wanna do is don't use anything like really abrasive or, or chemical. You don't need to. To clean a ground glass, all you'll need is some warm water and maybe a little bit of Dawn soap, just like a little bit of detergent, just a very small amount. When you clean your ground glass, water is gonna fill in all those little, little pits and valleys, and for a little bit, it'll actually become transparent again. Don't panic. Once you fully allow this to air dry, don't towel it off or anything, you don't want any lint in there, but once you air dry it, it will become a that matte surface again. So if you do clean your ground glass, just make sure you patiently dry it and it'll be back as, as good as new in no time. So just another thing about ground glass, some ground glass will have little lines in them. So this is a, a very old repurposed, I think it's an Eastman ground glass where it has grid lines, but the grid lines are actually uh, transparent on there. So those were made using tape that's kind of laid on there and those parts aren't ground down, so it forms this really nice kind of faint line that I can check and see that all my lines are straight up and down and things are level. It's kind of like the adjustment grid when you're cropping something in Photoshop and Lightroom. Other ground glass will be completely clean, like a lot of older ones will usually be just clean, no gridded lines or anything. It doesn't matter which one you end up with as long as it's gonna fit and be properly spaced in your camera. If you have any questions about ground glass with your camera, you can always feel free to drop those down below in the comments as well. And if you have any long form ones, please feel free to hit me up largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more Large Format Friday.